Waking up to a new sunrise Looking back from the other side I can see now with open eyes Darkest water and deepest pain What is your name? Aaron? And how old are you? For anything Cause my brokenness brought me to you And these wounds are a story you'll use So I'm thankful for the scars Cause without them I wouldn't know your heart And I know they'll always tell of who Now I'm sending in confidence With the strength of your faithfulness We don't talk about it in our society. We are shunned, people are, are stigmatized, there's shame attached to this. And we don't educate children about this. We teach kids tornado drills, fire drills, bus drills. We put all this information into their heads. We teach them nothing on sexual abuse. I know. And that's why I went after a law in the state of Illinois and just recently got it passed by the Senate called Aaron's Law. It's a law that will demand education. Good for you. Education. And what does the law do? Good for you. And I, and I plan to take this law national to protect children across this nation because kids need to be educated on sexual abuse. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you Lord sexually abusing me. My parents, the school, never taught me you don't keep these secrets, you tell somebody. So I kept it a secret. I didn't tell anyone. Well, something to know about these predators. They don't stop if they're getting away with it. This man repeatedly sexually abused and raped me until the age of eight and a half. I wasn't telling anyone. I was keeping this, best, this secret with my best friend because he was also abusing her. So how did my abuse end? No, it wasn't that police officer that had taught me for three years 
coming into the classroom about stranger danger. I wasn't learning safe and unsafe touch, safe and unsafe secrets, how to get away until today. No, we moved, and I got away from this monster. But I just moved that much closer to the next perpetrator in my life. This time, not that stranger, a family member. At age 11, fifth grade, I woke up to an older teenage cousin sexually abusing me. And for the next year and a half, repeatedly told me, this is our little secret, no one will believe you, Aaron. If you tell anybody, you will destroy our family. So instead, I turned to my little pink childhood diary and started to keep my secrets in the back of the diary. Something happened last night, but I don't know who to tell. And word after word, page after page, I described the things my cousin was making me keep a secret. Continuing to threaten me, suddenly it's happening at all the family gatherings while I babysat his two younger brothers. So how did that abuse end? Well, as I mentioned, if these perpetrators are doing it to one person, as you hear, they're often doing it to more than one. And my 11-year-old sister blurted out the words one day, Brian's gross. Well, that was that older teenage cousin. So I knew in that moment we had to tell somebody. So we told our parents, as you can imagine, with any parent, they were devastated. As my older sister said, I just can't see him doing this. You see, what they teach you in school about stranger danger, they show you that video of the man with the missing teeth, the greasy hair, looks like he's homeless in the rusty car trying to lure the kids with the candy, or walking up the sidewalk with the leash. But often, the people that are abusing kids are not only ones that they know, but upstanding citizens. We got people that work in high-profile jobs, firemen, teachers, youth pastors. I could go on and on. So often, that family member. In my case, also, the neighbor. But not that stranger I had now been taught about for six years by the same police officer. And the same time I am finding out my sister's being sexually abused by our cousin, I got that cop teaching us dare. I still have my dare card, and you flip it over, teaches you the eight ways on how to say no to drugs. I knew the consequences of what drugs do, so I never so much as put a cigarette or was an underage drinker. But where were the eight ways teaching us on how to get away until today? It never came. And unfortunately, it took finding out my little sister was being abused for my abuse to end. I ended up moving forward with my life, going down a very destructive path, depression, suicide attempt, eating disorders, you name it, because that's something so often that happens to victims. Others attempt different forms of suicide, don't even survive. Turn to prostitution, drug abuse, because so often people that are being abused do not report it until they're in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, because nobody ever gave them the message on how to speak up and tell. The shame that they carry, the fear of not being believed. So after getting my master's in social work, I quit my full-time master level job as a youth and family counselor, making it my mission to pass Aaron's law in my home state of Illinois, requiring that we teach kids once a year on personal body safety education. Teaching kids the differences between safe and unsafe touch, safe and unsafe secrets, how to report this to a safe adult and to keep reporting it if your abuse does not end. It's as simple as that. One hour out of a school year, we teach kids bully intervention, internet safety, as I mentioned there, stranger danger. This is just one more key component we should be teaching kids. I passed Aaron's Law in my home state in 2013, and since then, over a decade now, have traveled to more than half the country testifying to legislators to pass this law. As far away as Alaska and Hawaii, and I could tell you today, 37 states have now passed it. Ohio is one of 13 that is not. This is my third time testifying here. Seven years ago I came and testified before committee in the House where it passed, and I have been coming back year after year um, testifying over Zoom, trying to get Ohio to be the next state, especially because my husband grew up here in the suburbs. Nothing more passionate about getting it passed in my home state and his state. 
He's even trying to convince me to move here, and I told him I will not live in a state that does not teach this law. So it is my hope today, hearing my message, that you will see the importance of how, had I been educated as a young child, I would have spoken up and told. I am somebody that will not give up on this law as long as it takes me to get it passed in all 50 states.